She is one of the most unusual artists in the digital art space with her animated cosmic bugs. Today we're talking to Rennie Fish to unravel the mysteries behind her strange and wonderful art practice. Artist Journal, June 21st, 2023, broadcasting live from Berlin and New York City on Rug Radio via Twitter Spaces. My name is Adrian Pocabelli, and we welcome back co-host, artist, and conversationalist to the show, Runtune. How is your week going? Good morning and good afternoon. Um, it's going great. Um, the, uh, the girlfriend is away again. She's visiting her sister's. So I took this opportunity of her absence to organize and clean up my art space, which if she was here, she would be trying to micromanage. So <laughs> that <laughs> so is hilarious. I'm, I'm, I did a little spring cleaning uh, in the process. I found a bunch of materials that rather than throw them out, I decided to use to paint my backyard. Uh, it's been a good week. Well, How indeed. You? Have you found an apartment yet? Uh, basically, the ink is not on the paper yet, but the, there is an agreement in principle. Uh, what would you call it? A memorandum of understanding of sorts, a MOU. So that is good. Uh, you know, it's funny. It was the first uh, option, and then I thought it was all right at first, but then I saw the other options, which in theory were even nicer, but then I realized I want to live in a new neighborhood, and I also wanted to live preferably by myself and all that sort of thing. So at the end of the day, uh, by going to the other places, I realized I really liked the first option. And it's a luxury, I tell you, out here. To, I, I, there's probably two options. And they're, I'd even call them one and a half. I'm not even sure the second option was an option. So I was pretty lucky because I had to do it pretty quick. You know what they call it out here is Eigen Bedarf. And that is when the landlord moves back in. I got an Eigen Bedarf. So, uh, yeah, I had to move within three months. And so, anyways, I'm actually pretty thrilled, to be honest, about how everything's going. And it's kind of, you know, it's not ideal that it's during the summer, but it's, you know, you just got to be happy you find a place to live and you're not paying through the nose for it, you know? You know, that's I'm I'm glad that you are you're feeling optimistic about that. Sometimes a change like that can be really uh, just it can kind of clear out all the cobwebs mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Beautifully put, you know, and even like I feel like the show itself will have a reboot of sorts. It's funny. I was messaging with Kogo Laitis. Actually, we talked on Discord where I've never talked before. And uh, he's also he's mentioning something about an overlay. So we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. I think it could be really cool. He said something just really neutral, which sounds awesome. Uh, he's also saying real, real quick. How long were, have you been in your apartment? I've been here for four years. It'll be exactly four years. Wow. Yeah. So is that is that a long time for the people of Berlin who rent? You know, it's really interesting. You ask these days, increasingly so like back in the day. Uh, regular contracts where they're kind of unlimited were more common. And now almost everything you see is a temporary contract because, wow. yeah, it's just the nature of the market here and the rules and everything. Yeah. Cause you get, you know, like, I don't think the landlord's moving back in here, but he kicks me out. He can double the rent. Like literally. Yeah. So, yeah. I, know. I figured that was the case the way you said the landlord's moving back in. Like, yeah. I would just naturally assume. Yeah, that. it's just the nature of the situation. But other than that, I'm actually extremely excited. And I can talk about this a little bit. Ordinals. I think I'm, you know, I just met with the team, one of the, the main guy of the team of these guys that are doing ordinals. I'm going to re-release uh, the Peloponnesian War on Bitcoin. So that is incredibly exciting. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, isn't that exciting? I might need to ask you a few questions about ordinals. You've got, you've, piqued my curiosity. I will hopefully be the person to talk to in a couple of weeks here. And it may be released as soon as a couple of weeks. And then mine's going to be the test case. And after that, I, we're, if everything goes according to plan, of course, you know, but mine will be the test case. And then after that, it'll be okay, because they want more art on Bitcoin. And have you talked to Purple Drank? Doesn't he have some experience with or I'll have to. 
I'll have to because what's interesting yeah. is like finally, and then we'll get to Rennie Fish here. Uh, but what's so interesting about it is, you know, like because Gogolitis was, I was mentioning this to Gogolitis, he's saying, you know, I tried to mint on ordinals, but I had like a 15 kilobyte file and it would have cost me $100. Sounds like the guys I'm talking to have a solution for that. So that is pretty interesting because that was one of the big stumbling blocks. But after the test case goes out, then yeah, like they want art. So, and I'm happy to kind of funnel people over, so to speak. And so it could be a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. So stay tuned on that. Uh, Riddy Fish, I'm so excited and happy to have you on. Uh, where are you calling from? How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, great. Welcome. Um, hi, Poco Valley Rutum. Um, um, I want to say thanks for having me here. This is such a great honor. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, the honor is ours. I mean, you're such an awesome yes. artist here. Uh, it's Yeah, we're excited to have you. Oh, thank you. Um, I was actually listening to your channel time to time with some of my artist friends. Uh, Rizatio, you always mention about his art in your channel. <laughs> oh, Rizatio, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, recently, I just um, went full time of my art, quit my job. You're kidding. Uh, congratulations. Yes. I mean, that is Thank exciting. You. Yeah, congratulations. That's huge. Yeah, this is not a the, the great, great time, I think. Everybody is just too stressed out. <laughs> Even some of my friends, they are kind of struggling. Yeah, well, it's the nature of the market, you know, but uh, that makes your move even more courageous. And you know the yeah. saying, fortune favors the bold. I think that's actually in the Aeneid. Fortune favors the bold. So, you know, and it's like, I think that's great that you're, you know, you, you, that you mentioned that because it actually makes mm -hmm. me go, oh, I should really pick up one of Rennie Fish's work because she's living oh. off this stuff. I want to make sure buy Rennie Fish a little little food here. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. That is great. And I see Rosacho out there. Big shout out to Rosacho. Maybe we bring you on stage later too or sooner. But so tell us about your art, uh, Rennie Fish. And again, congratulations. And what country are you calling from? And you don't need to tell us if you don't want to. Um, I'm, I'm based in China. Oh, you're in China? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That's cool. So this is so exciting. So tell us about your story. Did Was there art school? And mm -hmm. how, how did you get started in this whole art business? Mm -hmm. um, uh, hello, guys. Uh, my name is Irene Fish. Um, I, I like to create bugs and <laughs> some weird, delicate looking creatures. Um, started my NFT journey from 2020. Um, after that, I started my art exhibition journeys around the world. Um, actually, those bugs went to Berlin, <laughs> Tokyo, New York, and also lots of places I've never been before, uh, especially during the COVID time. Um, I was at home, and they went traveling a lot. <laughs> and, and then uh, I got some chance to work with some musicians, producers, also fashion brands and magazines. Uh, yeah, uh, quit my job last month. Uh, I was a designer before. Uh, I want to say, uh, quitting, it, quitting is amazing. <laughs> I can sleep better now. Um, but meanwhile, I don't really want to put myself in a low income situation. So I got to create more and find a find a balance because uh, I also want more people to see us, to see those bugs. Thank you. Well, yeah, I'm totally excited. And if this show can help more people see the bugs, that excites me. And I can't wait to ask you more about them, but just a little bit more on the background. So you said you were a designer, mm -hmm. like a graphic designer, a fashion designer, another kind of designer? No, I was doing graphic and also user interface oh uh, for for a while very cool yeah i did that i did graphic design i guess from god was it five years maybe i did it and a lot of i love actually uh user interface graphic design do you like it too or not uh i prefer user interface design i love Just, it uh, 
like the... I think it's more clear than graphic. <laughs> but but both of them are struggling to me. So so I just choose to be a full time artist. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so thrilled for you. And again, you live once, so it's a very bold decision. So tell us about the bugs a little bit. Uh, why bugs? Mm -hmm. And is it just something that kind of, uh, where did this come from? And what's the genesis of mm -hmm. the bugs? Sure. Um, at the beginning, I started out creating girls and the fish men. Uh, I made some comics for them. And gradually, they settled down in my art. I call it M7 Planet. Um, you still can uh, find them in my in my art sometimes. Um, what I like about them is uh, they're they're all small. Um, before, like there are there are some kind of uh, ordinary human character in the life. Like uh, they they are extremely small or uh, like normal. So. Um, I'm, I'm I'm just obsessed with some tiny and small and soft stories and creatures. Um, the reason I think um, uh, maybe because I was moving with my family a lot when I until high school, um, I feel like um, I have a I never have a place to settle down. So those small objects and bugs makes me feel um, secure or to me, it's easy to handle. Like, um, even now, it kind of influenced my life. Um, I never buy, bought a lot of things because uh, I rent a very small apartment. Uh, before there was, a, I remember there was a Swedish magazine interviewed me. Like they asked me, uh, what's my collection in the digital life and real life? Um, I find out I only have some um, very, functional canvas bags collection in my real life. Yeah, that that's my simple story of creating those small creatures. Well, I like this um, description of, you know, the bugs make you kind of feel secure. I think one thing that I get from your art when I look at it is, uh, you know, you, you kind of, you see these bugs and you automatically are transported to this world that's much smaller than your own. Yes. <laughs> and it reminds me of a few have you seen the movie fantastic planet yeah i love it uh, i i remember i was yeah. watching a french version uh, i don't really i don't understand french but <laughs> i think the french version I think it's is a french, better than english I think it's version a french too. film uh yeah really? yeah okay I'll, I'll make a search <laughs> I watched it like three times. After the first ver uh, French version, I watched in English subtitles. Well, very interesting. super interesting. And so I have a couple of questions just on how you got started with NFTs then, Rennie Fish. I mean, did you start on Tezos or did you start on Ethereum? Because you have works here on a foundation and on mm -hmm. object. Uh, I don't know. I, I think mo most of the artists uh, from Ethereum, right? Because Tezos, Hikanunk was born after that, as I remember. Yeah, so you started on Ethereum then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very it's... cool. Yeah, I guess I did too. I, I mean, it's interesting because a lot of artists do start on, you know, started on Hen, and which I can never pronounce. I still am like hick at nunk or yeah. Hick at nunk. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else seems to have no problem there. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so you started on Ethereum, and then so what yes. made you go over to Tezos then? Um. Um. Yeah. Some uh, some of my artist friends recommend that. Like at that time, and every uh, I think lots of artists just want to give give a try on different kind of chain or. Um, platforms. There, at that time, just a lot of platforms just blow up, <laughs> and he can. I, 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 I was. I think I was. Um, I, I really enjoy that, but unfortunately, it was. It was. There was some problem for a while. For for for, for a while. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's what I like about it. And yeah, I kind of had a similar trajectory where I started on ETH and then 
you know, as it kind of got kind of popular, I, I was a little later. Like, I think I mm -hmm. actually minted after Hen kind of shut down because it was in December, I think, of 2021. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think it shut down in like November, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, but I was similar to you. I kind of, there's enough of a buzz going on with like the few artist friends that I had on Twitter that I kind of felt like it was, you know, it's a new market. It's other collectors. So why wouldn't you, right? Mm -hmm. So. And, and also make, made a lot of friends there from, from this community. Well, exactly. And then there was so much great art on there that you also just want to make sure you're a part of it. I mean, the purely practical reasons, it's like this whole thing could blow up is what I was thinking. Like this thing, like I can't, you know, in a sense, it's amazing. It hasn't blown up more than it has. Although maybe it's bigger than we might realize at the same time. So very interesting. And I guess, did I guess, and then you started selling editions as well, mm -hmm. I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple editions. Uh, basically, they're on Tezos. I don't really sell multiple editions on Ethereum. <laughs> That, that's what I see. And I also mm -hmm. see the art seems slightly different. Is that a fair uh, comment? Uh, you can say anything you want. <laughs> well, just in terms of, is, is that an accurate comment in your opinion? Um, I don't really heard about it. <laughs> oh. but, but, I think but it's, I like you know, for the most part, it's like the uh, the backgrounds are a little bit different than the stuff that you put on foundation um it's more like central figure you know just like compositionally things are a little bit different it's a little more versus the stuff on foundation which is you know yeah. more all over compositions and less you know it just it it does seem a little bit different i actually didn't really think about that until poco belly pointed that oh. out yeah i was thinking my art was always like not 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 that um enough to me so i didn't really figure out the like what kind of uh, style should I put it here? <laughs> or uh, only there is like a, a different collection. Uh, like there is a a Buck Marathon collection. Um, I think it, sh it it's good to be multiple editions, and and people can can enjoy more about the stories there. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and even from a financial point of view, I kind of that's one of the things I really love about Tezos. I mean, it's kind of been a discussion point uh, as of late or recently that I mean, part of the like it's easier to sell on Tezos because it's so much cheaper, right? Like, let's say you sell mm -hmm. works, you know, for a thousand dollars on Ethereum. Well, you're not necessarily going to sell a work every day. Right. But if you're on Tezos, if you I'm sure if you loaded up a, a new work on Tezos, you'd probably sell out, you know, your 15, 25 copies within the day because they're maybe ten dollars or whatever the price is. Right. Mm -hmm. It is much easier. So it's nice for that. Like, in a sense, Tezos is just from the purely economic point of view. It's really nice for that regular money that you might need, you know, to make rent or whatever the case may be. Right. Yeah, that, that creates flow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You got cash flow there. So tell us yeah. a little bit more about the work here. So I see uh, I see a lot of bugs, but I also see fish. I see what looks like some Eastern imagery. And from what I understood, you also said you started in comics or like with a comic type thing. Is that correct? And and where is this all going? Uh, comic is like... Uh... Uh, some very early art than or uh, then uh, the the artwork you can see here uh, they are not here <laughs> and um do you want me to pick up one to yeah see? actually why don't you post a work can can you post a work from where you are um let me search otherwise we can otherwise send it to runetune who knows how to post i still don't know how to post a link embarrassingly um, and I <laughs> deeply appreciate Runetune's help in that oh, regard. How about uh, I introduce my pin art because I really like this one. It's my latest art. Okay, exciting. And this is on foundation or on object? It's on foundation. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let me just bring this up. Okay. Can you see that? 
Yeah, let me just, uh, I am going to bring it up. So why don't you tell us about the work? What is going on in the work? Sure. Uh, I created this one last month, and the theme is moon, music, and spring. And I want to put extra love uh, in this piece. So, because um, I think spring should be full of energy, life, snails, like everything wake up from the winter. Mm -hmm. And in Chinese myth, if you talk about full moon, and it's also a symbol of unity and happiness. So the rabbit is actually a very classic creature in the myth. Um, it works hard for, for, for a lady who lives in the moon. Um, but actually it was a sad story because she can never meet the man she loves. So I didn't really portray her story because I think the animal is just much more simple than human being. So I want to highlight those creatures. Um, the rabbit is holding a heart in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, it's a party uh, under the full moon. And there are a lot of, uh, there are some human beings you can see. There are some girls, but just transfer to the flo flowers and being quiet. Yeah, that's the story of this piece. And um, Rin, I mean this. Rinny Fish, mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit about how you make these? How? Yeah, like what do you use to make uh, the work that you make? You mean I too? Yeah, sure. Any any, yeah, any, um, any information you might want to share? Sure. Uh, basically, I use Procreate. Um, I use iPad mostly. And uh, for visual effect, I use um, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut. Right? That's uh, the most main tools I use. Very nice. I was I was just curious. Are you are you thinking about touch designer or something? Because Poco Valley was mentioning about that for a couple of times. You read my mind. You read my mind, Bernie <laughs> Fish. I was like that circular pixelation. I'm like, is that touch designer? Do you use touch designer? No, that's some uh, my future goal. I want to learn it. But I, I can see that the circular effect is, uh, is something I, yeah, I really want to reach the similar effect as touch designer. And because I saw some, um, some amazing art from some of my uh, artist friend, Saiko Ehala. I, I don't know if you know her. Exactly. And, yeah, That's exactly yeah, She is very great. And, yeah, she, she her art kind of like inspired me, and I really want to try some new tool to 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 make my art too. You know, I've heard really good things. We had a show on uh, art tools and just like what it's the latest art tools that people are using, and Touch Designer mm -hmm. came up. It sounds like it's yeah. almost like coding, but you don't need to know how to code, like this sort of thing, which sounds amazing. I, I don't even know what that means, and there's almost too many things to explore. But, uh, but yeah, so that's really interesting that you're not using it. Uh, and it, when I look at your work, you know, one of the things that also uh, hits me, and I'm curious to just uh, bounce this idea off you, it kind of feels like a placenta of sorts. You know, you have that rabbit in the moon, but it almost feels like it's like a, you know, almost like this young sort of fetus, I guess, in a placenta that's growing. Do, does that cross your mind? Do, I assume it does. Um, w w uh, can I ha ask what is placenta? <laughs> oh, that is when you have a, a baby that's growing in oh. the mother's womb. Uh, then it kind of, do, do you know what I'm talking about? When a yeah. unborn baby? I got it. I got it. <laughs> I remember that word you mentioned. <laughs> Yeah, I think everything just, um, I really want to build some um, image like uh, um, everything is growing and yeah, maybe, um, but actually in the middle, in around this rabbit and I think it's a full moon, but yeah, you can, you can, uh, you can say that like it's a pl placenta. 
Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Very cool. And uh, also, another thing that I wanted to uh, talk about is the color. I uh, mm -hmm. like you have a. What I like about your work, one of the many things I like about your work, is you have this very interesting use of color. It almost feels like these kind of what I would call like psychedelic pastels. Uh, so, it, could you talk about the colors and why you decide on those mm -hmm. kind of colors? Yeah, um, remember I mentioned about the comic before I create. Uh, I don't really use colors because um, I was kind of afraid to use colors. Um, in China, um, before we went went to um, some like professional art art academy school. Uh, you got to have some like art training or something. And it's like class, and and you have to draw some exact um paint some paintings that teacher like and or school likes. And uh, like in South China, um, lots of colors they like. Um, I think the school like. I mean, um, they like more like low key, not like my colors and um but at that time i i was really obsessed with those kind of like loud colors uh, my teacher also uh said like oh why are you using such a cheesy colors <laughs> so i was kind of like afraid to use uh use them to create for a long time um but like one day <laughs> i i started to use like um red and some uh, like couple colors and then just gradually yeah I find the I find the how to say that I find out how to how to use them well how to use them to become my art it, it is recognizable it like very recognizable thank you yeah yeah stylistically yeah it just seems so unique to you you know, it reminds me of uh, there's something about the the way you the the texture and the color. It reminds me of uh, like airbrush T-shirts that you'd find at carnivals and like outdoor venues in the United States. Uh huh. Like straight just straight art. <laughs> yeah. And have you traveled much, Rini Fish, uh, with your art? Like you mentioned, you were showing work in, you know, New York as part of, I think you said as part of a fashion, uh, you know, thing. Can you talk about the fashion side of things? And if you've traveled mm -hmm. much, uh, were you, have you been able to travel much? And tell us about the fashion thing, too. Yeah, um, I think in the last couple of years, I don't really travel. Um, but uh, I, I like social media. So I uh, post a lot, a lot of my art there, and um, fashion brands like so Instagram. They, they, one of them just DM me, and I think two of them, and find me to like make some commission art for them. And another Italian brand, and they want me to create a bug, uh, create some bugs for, for their new collection. So, yeah, am I um. Uh, my fashion work basically from Instagram. That is so cool. Sorry, continue, continue. Um, that's all. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, I thought I interrupted you. Um, that is so interesting. I mean, you see it with Strange Thing, of course, the AI artist, and you know, he was in Vogue Italia and seems to kind of have a fashion thing going on too, also on Instagram. That's really, uh, like, I haven't heard though too many people I mean, it's pretty amazing that these brands, I guess they really resonate with the bugs. Like there's something about it. And what are they doing with it? Are they putting it on a t-shirt or more than that? Are they taking the patterns and making pants? Like what are they doing with your art? Uh, one of them, uh, they put my art for, for their uh, new collection, put my art on their t-shirt. Um, Another one. I think they got different strategy. Like uh, Paul and Bear, they just they just want artists to create some um, some how to say like PR material to 
to build up their brand. Uh, sure. You don't really design something for them, but you they hire different artists and make some um, some art uh, for their for the for their shoes or or clothes, and they they don't really produce that. They just they just want them to. They just want more people to think their brand is cool, <laughs> and because they can hire a lot of artists. And and so these fashion brands are they they're finding you and they're asking you for your work, or or is this something you kind of went to them? No, I don't think if I find them, they will they will notice me. <laughs> they they someone just find me from social media. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. And so welcome everybody, and we have a very nice beautiful crowd here of wonderful people. So if you want to join us on stage and ask Rennie Fish about her art, maybe you're a collector of Rennie Fishes, or I might also send out some prank invites here to the stage. Uh, that would also be wonderful. I see Waffle there with some news over there. Retro Manny, Mikey de la Creme, Rosatio, and Santiago, and more. So welcome everyone. Just put a request in and we will bring you up on stage. And so, Rooney Fish, what's next? Where are you going with this? Is there a direction or is there, or is it simply make more interesting images? And uh, is there a path in your mind? Yeah, um, currently, I think um, still got to prepare more art and be more productive and yeah, get more chance to expect exhibit my art in different place. Um, I hope I can travel around to meet more curators or my artist friends. And I don't really think so far, like two years, uh, three years or five years. Now, now I'm, what, what I'm focusing is uh, finding my balance to, <laughs> to get stable, a stable, income and keep keep my creating like um i'll say that um keep creating yeah, yeah consistent yeah consistently and just kind of in a sense really kind of it sounds to me like develop your practice right like turn this into yeah. a uh grow this thing kind of almost grow your business uh to a certain degree and so in that respect I, I mean i feel like i've seen you tweet out maybe a month or two ago something physical weren't you making prints um i do some prints uh i i put some prints on my website reallyfish.com <laughs> i was gonna say yeah feel free to post your website as well because maybe it's easy for people to just click on and uh yeah so very cool so tell us about the printmaking then because those are still so do you simply do a uh, inkjet print or do you do something more elaborate um sorry uh, i don't really understand that oh no question. problem at all uh, when you <laughs> print when you print out uh your works uh are do you simply is it a fairly simple process where you just get some nice paper and put it in a printer or ask a printer to print it or do huh. you do something more complicated um yeah um if i i think some of them uh, which I put them on my website. Uh, there, uh, I I um, made some orders by some factory, like professional studio. And another um, another part of them are uh, in Italy, because I had just had my solo exhibition in Milan, and they helped me um, create some very how's it that jelly and complicated. <laughs> um pranks and th i think they that that part of pranks only sell in italy right i think that's what i saw actually now that uh, and you t you posted that on twitter didn't you yeah i did very cool so and those are for sale on your website yeah you can see some part of them are from like collab uh, hold on collab product uh, product collab and and some part of them are um, prints okay excellent oh. so so 
some of the, <laughs> some of the titles for your prints are really funny. Actually, a lot of the titles for your work is sometimes really funny to me. Um, there's one that you have called Pure Halloween Special. <laughs> and then in parentheses, <laughs> no pumpkin, only tomato. <laughs> yes, there's no pumpkin. <laughs> you have a very nice website, uh, Rennie Fish. Thank you. Yeah. And look Thank at you. the t-shirts. I filled all my best out. Yeah, very nice. It's uh, very kind of easy to navigate and everything. And you're on Super Rare too? This is yeah, great. Uh, I didn't realize that. You, mm -hmm. So there you are. Okay, excellent. Um, so yeah, that should be on your uh, Twitter because I missed that actually. There you are. So this is wonderful. So tell us about Milan then. Uh, how did that show come about? And who is that a group show? Is that a solo show? What's happening in Milan with Rennie Fish? Um, it, it was a solo exhibition. Um, the art of exhibition, uh, the name of that is uh, we want to turn the body to the brain. And the curator is, I don't know, it's just someday a curator, I think the gallery, owner of the gallery, and she just um, messaged me on also on Instagram. And she, she was like, I do want to join our upcoming solo exhibition on like um, winter. I think she con contacted me on summer. So it's been like uh, half a year. And I don't know if it's, uh, it's usual, like you have to prepare a solo exhibition for a long time. Um, but at the beginning, I thought that there are like scammer because there are a lot of scammer. Yeah, totally. And <laughs> after half a year, yeah, just happening from January to March, and it's it goes well in Milan. It um it was a very small gallery, and I think they are foc focusing on uh, bringing bringing more Asian artists to uh, Italy. Yeah. Well. And I think that's great. You know, as the world gets more and more conflict, I think it's great in the arts here that people are building bridges. I think it's a wonderful thing. And look at your, now I, I, on your Instagram, no wonder. I mean, you're doing very, very well on your Instagram. I mean, 14,000 followers and, you know, those top tweets there have 1,200 likes, 900 likes. No wonder they're reaching out to you. So, yeah, I mean, and there you are in the o ONBD on a billboard. I mean, yeah, you have a wonderful, very focused uh, Instagram there. So again, I guess one of the takeaways, one of the lessons here for us is the importance of Instagram still. Yeah, I think Twitter and Instagram both works very uh, well to me. Um, I, uh, as a full-time art artist, I think, um, same as other artists, that we have to um, put out our extra time to our social media. Exactly. I mean, it sounds like the great majority of your opportunities have been a result of your social media. I mean, I guess that's true for many of us, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Social media is important. Yes, indeed it is. Indeed it is. Okay, so tell us, do you have any shows coming up? What, what's next for you? Um, um, currently, um, I have a exhibition in a group exhibition in Singapore, and there will be some um, new jobs coming soon by unknown collector. And I think uh, lots of people know know him or she, or her. <laughs> I don't really know that account. That, that pronouns is her or she, or, or him. Um, just currently, just creating more more upcoming jobs. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So a Singapore show. That's very exciting. And yeah, I actually was. Uh, I just heard from unknown collector and. I actually, I think I can, I'm going to try, Unknown Collector put out a really nice tweet about these spaces that we're doing. So I'm going to see, that reminds me, I'm going to see if Unknown Collector wants to show up and we'll, maybe we'll find out, or at least we can have a guess if it's a he or a she 
uh, if we hear the audio, if they're willing to come on, which would be pretty exciting. So, okay, very good. So you have some, uh, you have some show in Singapore. And what else, what, what have we not talked about with your work here? Like, what do you want people to know about your artwork, Rennie Fish? You have a few people here listening to you. What do you want people to know about your work? <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what kind of things other people want to know me more. Because <laughs> okay. uh, well. basically, I create post a lot. Uh, any, like... Um, work in progress, I post a lot, and finish for art, I post a lot. Uh, oh, okay, I'm very would, you say, would you say you're more active on Instagram? I think uh, I post some daily stuff on IG story. Um, okay, Twitter gotcha. is like more established stuff. Interesting. Uh, and by the way, everyone, uh, Rennie Fish's Instagram is awesome. I have discovered several new pieces there, uh, new artists, and it, it it does have its own flavor, and it doesn't seem like it's just the NFT scene. It, it's also kind of like the Instagram kind of, you know, scene a little bit. And so how about this, Rennie Fish? Tell us about your influences. Like, who are your major influences in your art? Um, Sure. Um, My... Uh, my mentor, my, my mentor artist is a uh, Japanese art artist, um, Yoko Tadanori. I was I was in, inspired by him a lot, especially colors, and also um, most of those cre uh, creatures uh, they are from my negative emotions. Um, I had some emotion control issues. It's it's been uh, really easy for me to rage or <laughs> shut down. <laughs> so I'm I'm trying to um, find my peace and balance. And so I think creating those bugs is one of the solutions. And also I talked to my therapist about my art and my relationship with people and she said oh uh, she said surprised because it uh, sounds like I'm a great listener I never talk much or um, hard to say no in front of other people but um, my art looks so loud to her and I mentioned about that because um, lots of young people here recently they're just obsessed with some MBTI uh, tests like some kind of personality typology test and uh, I don't know if you know it <laughs> no I've never heard of this so this is kind of a bit of a thing in China yeah it's like a Meyer uh, the full name is like Myers Frazier's test okay vaguely <laughs> vaguely but I yes yeah, so okay and it it determines your personality type is that right yeah yeah and it's trending here and I <laughs> definitely belong to I, but it seems like E should be more. Uh, um, yeah, anyway, um, I'm still trying to uh, figure out the connection with those creatures. And uh, I guess they are my healing bug. They help me to say something I can, and um, I think they are doing great. Well. It's it's very interesting you mentioned personality. Like in a weird way, do you consider these bugs as kind of you know projections or you know manifestations of your personality to a certain degree? Uh, sorry, I don't really understand that. Sorry, that was uh, oh, I'm what? trying to use. Uh, <laughs> sorry uh, for you, my poor English. <laughs> no, not at all. And you're doing wonderful. Actually, you're doing wonderful. Uh, do you think the bugs in a strange way or in an unusual way are representations of yourself? Sure. I think most of the artists there, they are just represent some part of themselves. And so those bugs definitely are rich side of me, <laughs> of myself. You know, you've told me how, you know, in your design classes, the professors or the teachers 
thought your colors were really loud. And then you, you know, you mentioned your therapist saying that the art is very loud. Do you think of your art as being very loud? Uh, looks very loud, but it can make me quiet. <laughs> you know, because w- what's funny is when I look at your work, it's there's something there's like it's there's all this like soft texture and these kind of like glowing things. And to me, it seems actually very quiet, even though it's very colorful. Mm-hmm. It's very like serene, <laughs> euphoric. I like it. <laughs> Yeah. And as far as uh, displays, I noticed you have some uh, projector of your work or projection of your work on Instagram here. Uh, do you like the projection of your work the best? Because I, I like it myself just because it makes everything so big and almost just kind of delicious. Like the art is just so um, you know, is that your favorite way of seeing your art as well, or do you prefer it small? Uh, do you have a favorite kind of way of displaying your work? Um, I think projector is not the best one, but I like huge screen. Uh, I put my art in Dubai twice, and they're they're super rich, and the, their screen is like sixteen meters, like <laughs> three sixty degree, and looks huge and immersive i really like the way they they showcase the art me as well like i think it looks incredible uh with this post i see here i don't know if it was from art dubai and so you were also at art dubai and what happened there again was that just uh was that a nft show uh how did that come about um also i want to say Instagram, Instagram. Well, isn't that <laughs> interesting, right? Yeah, the curator likes in, to use Instagram to find artists, and they contact me, and for for their exhibition in Dubai. Well, I, I think this is so important because sometimes in the you know Twitter, in the digital art, in the NFT space, we can be a little Twitter centric. And, you know, it's it's an important lesson here that there are other audiences on other platforms. And sometimes those audiences may be, you know, Twitter is a little edgy for a lot of people. Like I, most of the people I know are not on Twitter, you know, in my day to day life. But most of them are on Instagram. And that goes for a lot of the, you know, artists that I know out here that, I, you know, who make physical work. Most of them are on Instagram. So it's a very important kind of lesson here. Yeah, I've had the same experience. Like, you know, I got an Instagram a long, long time ago and I used it socially, you know, just posting whatever social stuff. And I didn't really focus on the art so much. And when I tried to make an account just focused on art, it didn't seem to really move a whole lot. But what I like about Twitter is that it's all, it's strictly business, you know, just (laughs) art stuff only that is so funny and uh, that and you know like maybe a secret of rennie fish's success is how incredibly focused uh the art is and then once in a while rennie fish puts her own picture and then another 20 pictures of art and then her with the art and then another 20 pictures of art it's a very easy uh to understand feed so that is also uh important i think and valuable and clearly as well as the art itself. It's working for Rennie Fish. Santiago, I'm so glad to have you here. Welcome to the stage calling from Uruguay. Welcome to the show. How are you? How are you guys? <laughs> doing How's wonderful. everyone doing? Wonderful. It's... Love to hear your voice, Santiago. Hi, Santiago. So... Hi, Rennie Fish. Nice to talk to you here. I like your art. I like your art very much too. It's great to listen to you talking. So I had a question about the kind of material that is in your universe. Seems like watery or maybe like like shelly, shelly fish or shallow. I I want to ask you what do, do you have to say about that? It all it all looks like the glowing in water to me.
You might be on mute, Rennie Fish. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't really hear. hear, hear uh, the, the, Santiago was asking so if about your work I looking like, like this, water. This liquid quality to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I really mm -hmm. like glowing things. So, um, yeah, just those glow, gluey, how to say that? Like, look. <laughs> oh, glowing, um, glowing. Glowing, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, glowing and uh, liquid creatures. Um, I, I feel that those kind of uh, texture makes me feel um, like like what I mentioned, secure. And they're kind of um, coming from my childhood. And do you remember some <laughs> some cheap toy you had before? <laughs> Um, the plastic toy. Yeah, I think they're part of my childhood. Yeah, I I see what Santiago is saying. You even have fish in your work. It, it reminds me of jellyfish a little bit. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah. At the beginning, I think I think girls and uh, the the fish they're they're they show very. They show up more than bugs, and then um, gradually, I think bugs like coming, becoming the citizen in this planet, and you you, you don't really see the human being there anymore. <laughs> and it's... now there are like more uh, like different kind of creatures coming up. It it feels like the foundation for a you know animated series almost. Would you ever do anything like that? Uh, animation? Yeah, like it seems like this could be almost like a cartoon in a sense, like or the foundation or the basic elements mm -hmm. of a, you know, of a animated show of some kind. Would that ever interest you? Has that thought crossed your mind? Yeah, um, I thought about it before, um, but compared to animation, maybe I want to make games like more than animation. Oh, cool. Yeah, because uh, I had a, exper a, a small exper experiment in, yeah. on Twitter um, before, and uh, I let people to to comment, like choose A or B or C, and different story going to gonna go on and on, <laughs> and lots of people join, and it's, it's, it's like some classic RPG game. <laughs> That is oh, hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I would love to see that. I'd love to see that. We have Hasdrubal Waffle has joined us on stage. A nice cameo appearance from Mr. Waffle. Waffle, welcome to the stage. And I, I assume calling from the United States. Uh, how are you doing? And do you have a question for Rennie Fish? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, sorry, I was eating. I was eating breakfast when you made the request earlier. <laughs> all good. I didn't want to talk with my mouth full. Yeah, all good. All good. So it's great to have you um, on the show. Yeah, I had a, I had a, a comment and a question. Um, the comment. Well, I guess the question was: if any fish has ever seen any of the, um, any of the work from the art collective Paper Rad from the United States? Um, cause I get a real paper rad vibe from some of her work, um, especially, uh, some of the earliest stuff that she posted on Hiccup Monk. Oh, you mean prints? Oh, you mean prints? Uh, pa it's paper rad, P-A-P-E-R-R-A-D. Paper rad. Or maybe there's only one, uh, paper rad, P-A-P-E-R-A-D. It's, um... They're an art collective out of Providence, Rhode Island, in the late 90s. A lot of them were members of, uh, or attended RISD, um, the Rhode Island School of Design. Uh. And uh, they, sorry about that. I love it. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> um, but they're, uh, I guess, like, uh, yeah, it was kind of a, a quick thing. I think there was a TV show on Cartoon Network where one of the members, Ben Jones, uh, had a 
had a brief a brief uh, show called Problem Solvers, but there, there it's a lot of neon colors and kind of um, I guess off the beaten path type characters that you wouldn't normally think of as characters in a show. Can you send it to me after? Uh... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you'd really dig it. Thank you. Um, and then, and then my other comment was, I was curious if you were going to do any more um, pixel work on Apido. Apido. Because I really love those, but those pieces almost never end up on secondary. Um, I, but they're I, they're really gorgeous. Oh, thank you. I I I didn't really consider about uh, Apido. Um, but if you, yeah, if you mention, I don't know, do you know anybody still creating there? I'm not, I'm not sure I see stuff pop up every now and again, but, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I haven't checked it out in a while. <laughs> um, it, I, I will check it out. <laughs> it is quite, it. it is quite beautiful. I'm looking at it now and it does have a very interesting quality to it. It's interesting, 8 Badu, like everybody... You know, it's, it brings their own thing to 8 Badu. You know, it's such a limited palette, right? I mean, or a limited canvas, I should say, 8 pixels by 8 pixels. It's incredible how different everything, the, the you know, you can see people's style. Like, for instance, Rennie Fish, I can see the colors. And I find the colors in your work, Rennie Fish, super interesting, actually, in terms of the background, say, on object. Uh, you use a lot of just... I almost wonder if maybe it's because, you know, uh, you grew up with, uh, I don't know, in China with just different palette, because uh, you have this very interesting, like this, you know, almost uh, neutral green. Uh, you love the almost a neutral purple, not typical colors, I would imagine, uh, in the background. One, you have like a, almost like a uh, yellow green with a bright orange. Uh, yeah, so can you talk about that a bit, or is it is it purely intuitive? I mean, you mentioned colors before, but uh, is there anything more to say on that? Are you mean background color? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Or is it just what um, works? Yeah, it went work by the, by the works, <laughs> by the creatures. Okay. I, I didn't really... Uh, think too much at the beginning. Yeah, so it's uh, mostly intuitive then. And and how long does it take you to make a work, generally? And it depends on how many bugs. Uh, if there is like a single bug in bug marathon, it takes uh, definitely less than uh, one week. Um, but if there is like a um, Full piece like a reverse SAD. Uh, I mean, th th some like more bugs you can see, uh, probably like uh, um, two weeks or less than two weeks. Okay, excellent. So, yeah, that's that's about what I would guess, but I mean, a significant amount of time goes into each one of these works. And so, just as we're wrapping up here, then. Another question I kind of had, and then I'll pass it to the floor to see if anybody else has any further questions as we wrap up here. Have you tried AI or artificial intelligence at all, uh, like Mid Journey or anything like that, or is that uh, does that interest you at all? Uh, me? Yes, Rennie Fish. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Mm, I tried tried Mid Journey uh, a couple times. Um, but um, just for for the background creating, like there there was a uh, an exhibition in New York, and their screen is like extremely weird, <laughs> and it's unusual. So I, I have to expand the extent the background because usually my art is square, as you see, and I have to extend different background. Um, for the screen to match the screen, so uh, if some AI tool like Mid Journey, uh, yeah, help me a little bit last time. Interesting. So you'll use it to make the canvas bigger. 
Yeah, I think only one time, but after that, I don't really use it <laughs> You're for, done. for creating. <laughs> okay, excellent. Well, does anybody have any further questions for Rinny Fish as we wrap up here? Uh, Waffle, do you have any final comments? Um, no, just keep doing what you're doing. Your, it, your work is amazing. Oh, thank you. I will. And also, uh, sorry, we have a late comer to the stage here. Oh, they disappeared. Oh, here's Faisal. Well, let's add Faisal Leah. You got here just in time. They are connecting on the stage. Uh, Faisal, welcome to the show. And where are you calling from? Faisal, do you read me? Faisal Leah, you might be on mute. Going once, going twice. Well, Faisal, if you do, oh, we're here. Faisal, welcome to the show. Where are you calling from? From Nigeria. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So welcome to the show. And do you have a comment or a question for Rinny Fish as we wrap up here? No, sir. I just called to greet you. Well, welcome to the show. You're among good friends here and some of the most open-minded people you're ever going to find on the internet and in the world. So welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. I'm welcome. Well, you're, and we're here every week, uh, Faisal. We're here every week at 9.30 a.m. in New York and 3.30 in Berlin. I'm not sure what time that is in Nigeria, but uh, if you look online, I'm sure we can figure that out. So again, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us up here. Oh, thank you. oh sorry, sorry. Uh, are you there? Okay. Uh, so anyways, as we wrap up, Santiago, any final thoughts? Just that you are amazing, Rini Fish, and I love your art and the way you communicate with the rest of us in this Twitter, NFT Twitter scene. You are amazing. I would totally echo that. I, Thank you so much. Same. Rini Fish is a natural uh, social media creature. Uh, she is quite good at what she does here. Uh, Rini Fish, any final thoughts before I turn it over to Runtoon? Um, just want to say thanks for having me here. <laughs> I, I, I was flattered uh, when I when I got the invitation from you. Well, you know, I, what? lots of my friends listen to our channel and I think your audience are very cool. Well, I especially agree with that second part that you mentioned. The audience is cool and I'm really excited to hear that. And it's exciting to hear like you know, it's kind of mind blowing for me to think that, you know, people in China are watching the show. Like that is incredibly exciting. Here we have our friend Faisal from Nigeria, uh, you know, all the way Uruguay, you know, the United States. So it's incredibly exciting and, you know, long overdue. And don't be a stranger, Rinny Fish. We'd love to have you back. Uh, you know, keep us updated on everything you're doing. Maybe in six months, you do it again. And uh, yeah. Again, the honor is ours. And Rune Tune, do you have any final thoughts as we wrap up here? Congratulations on uh, you know quitting your job and going full time artist. Um, I wish you all the success. Um, I'm going to send you a couple uh, uh, links to to movies. I think that you would uh, appreciate based on the bugs, the colors, the glowy stuff. Um, it's been a pleasure to speak with you, Rennie Fish. Well, that'll be amazing. Thank you so much. Yes. I had and a great time. I'm glad to hear that. And thank you, Rennie Fish. Thank you to everybody that came on stage, Santiago, Waffle. And thank you, everybody who's listening in here. Another wonderful show. And thank you, most of all, Rune Tune for showing up each and every week, which means the world, helping keep this show on the road. Thank you, everybody. And until next time, take care. Thank you.